What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? Stick around to the end for the punchline. Hi. It is September 28th, and I am Angel Lily, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a little plugged up in the ears, a little plugged up in the mouth, apparently, uh, and the sinuses. Uh, you can call me Auntie Angel if you like, or Angel the Art Angel, or Z Gala the Art Angel. Angel Lily is my more common name. <laughs> and this is an authentic action short. We'll get to it. I'm going to talk today about cycles and waves. And also, what I often talk about, which is uh, fitness and freedom, and some other little tidbits from my upcoming book, The Shift. So let's get into it, starting with Cycles and Waves. By the way, this is the start of a new cycle with this segment I'm calling shorts, but you may have noticed, is not the one-minute short that is called Shorts on YouTube. Confusingly, mm, we can handle it. Anyway, it's just shorter than my usual one-hour episode, and I'm not sure how short or long it's going to be. <laughs> I'm aiming for that 10, 12, 15-minute sweet spot. We'll see how I do. Stick around, and we'll also see if I remember to give you that punchline. <laughs> uh, you could type it in. If you can't stand it, you already know. Ruin it for everybody else. I'm going to have some coffee. As I mentioned, I'm a little bit congested, and it is September 28th. We're just getting into the fall season, and I think it's a good time to talk about cycles and waves and how... There's cycles to everything. Things come in cycles. Eventually, they might die, and something else takes over those cycles. Life is full of cycles, though. You can really look at just about anything in this life and see some sort of cycles to it. And, of course, our own lives are no exception to that. And as I'm working on my book, The Shift, I... I'm thinking uh, the focus of that book is emotional fitness, emotional regulation, tools for self-helping, for self-improvement, for self-mastery, emotional mastery. And so in diving into that topic, it has uh, become increasingly important for me to make a whole chapter about how it is natural that we have ups and downs in life, that we have, sometimes we catch a cold, or sometimes we uh, have a extra sleepy night. I'm distracted because I just noticed there's a baby lizard over there hanging out in my doorway. Sometimes you have baby lizards hatch in your head hut, and they're distracting. There's all sorts of cycles to life that are many of which are going to come up unexpectedly. And others, like perimenopause that I'm going through, and other, you know, hormonal cycles, as well as the aging process in general, going from a child through a puberty, you know, teenage years, through adult, young adulthood, up through the aging process. Those are all natural cycles, which you can see coming, but you still can't get out of, sort of, so to speak. Not sort of, for sure, right? And, uh, you know, they might vary a little bit from person to person, but pretty much all of us who are born are going to die. All of us have this aging process to contend with. Despite our eternal efforts <laughs> to escape it, to get out of it, to figure out to figure it out, um, and we're not giving up yet, and I'm not saying we should, but it, but it does strike me as entertaining sometimes how, 
how much energy we put into not aging as opposed to aging well, I suppose would be my thought on that at the moment as I am clearly aging, whether I like it or not. Um, anyway, back to cycles and waves. I was thinking about how there's, there's this pulsing nature of things, right? Waves, the way that waves come in in the ocean, the way that our hormones, especially in women, come in waves and cycles, um, the way our energy throughout just the day and night comes in. These are all could be looked at as waves. And those waves also come in sets, just like on the ocean. If you've ever sat on the ocean or tried surfing, or perhaps accomplished surfing, <laughs> I've only tried it myself, um, and sat a lot and watched how the waves come in in sets. And there's bigger cycles to it where like some times of the year and certain years especially the waves will be extra big and there's also smaller cycles there's most of us are aware of how the full moon creates high t higher tides in any given area and uh, where there's ocean or a big lake even and that also happens in our own bodies with the water in our bodies to a to a probably lesser degree but perhaps to a greater degree since that's in our body so you can measure it measure it in different ways right um all this babbling to say there are many 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 cycles and waves in our lives and only some of them are we even aware of at any given time and yet many 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 of them are impacting our physical experience and our energetic experience which is all that's all intertwined to my thinking so i think that is such an important thing to keep in mind as you set goals and strive to achieve them um and if you find yourself needing to adjust course so to speak falling off track as i so frequently do it's it's important to just keep in mind that that's natural that's part of the process it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean you should throw up your hands and give up, throw a hissy fit. It doesn't, doesn't mean any of that. It just means that you're human. It just means that you're part of life, that your experience is just like all other life experience in that it's full of these cycles and waves. And if you can learn to ride the upswing, as I call it, really try to lean in when things are going well, when things are going your way. Don't be afraid to push a little more. Don't be afraid to go a little further. You might just surprise yourself. And at the and on the other foot, on the back side of the cha-cha-cha, sometimes when things are just not going your way, when things, when your energy is low, when you wake up with a little bit of a sore throat or something, just just go with that as well. Take your foot off the gas. Give yourself a little extra break time, a little extra grace. Recognize that you're human, that you're part of life, that that's just the way the cycles and waves go sometimes. So learn to ride it out, as I like to say. Um, yeah, and keep in mind that, that those, they'll be... There'll be regular cycles and waves to things, and there'll be bigger overarching cycles and waves, which may or may not be regular. Um, and there'll be big, big splashes, big sloshes, big, big ripples and quakes and riptides sometimes. So um, all of that is just part of being alive. It's just part of the nature of things. So it's no reason to get upset. It's no reason to give up. It's no reason to think less of yourself or anyone else. It's just, it's just like, think of it like an obstacle course. It's an extra little challenge. So it's reason to step up. And that brings me well into my second point that I wanted to talk about, which is fitness is freedom. The more, the reason that I focus so much on fitness and wellness for myself and try to 
spread that message and preach that message to others is because that really makes the key difference about how well you're going to be able to ride out these cycles and waves, how much you're going to enjoy that process and how much you're going to suffer and and maybe even cause others around you to suffer with your com complaining and your clawing at things or whatever the case happens to be. Uh, my point is that the more you can develop a healthy relationship with your own body and pay regular attention to doing your best to be healthy and well and fit and therefore more f the more free you will be by way of being able to do more things, by way of being able to ride those cycles and waves with more style and grace and ease. And um, as I mentioned already, I'm a little bit stuffy today, fighting a head cold. I've also been struggling with a little dip after a long time of depression and clawing my way out. I've been having a little bit of a little dip lately and um, gained some weight, having some hormonal issues, having some personal and public issues. And all that's not to complain about it. It's just to say that that's part of living a full life. It's kind of bound to happen to various degrees. It doesn't mean you should always be waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak. I think the more fit I focus on being, the more I focus on just accepting that there's going to be these cycles and waves, and the more I um, surrender to them at the same time that I expect myself to get through them even stronger, with even more wisdom, with even more grace, with even more uh, a sense of my own authentic style, then the easier I do ride them out. The, the, the better I feel like I get through most of those. And sometimes I get knocked down, you know? Like I mentioned, I had a couple years of being knocked pretty low. And I think that happens to the best of us, as they say. So if you are getting knocked down right now, I would remind you that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you deserve to get knocked down. It doesn't mean anything other than that's life sometimes. We all get knocked down sometimes. So um, I hope you will hang on to the knowledge that you can get up again. Because the best and the worst of us have and will again. So... Um, I wanted to say along with the fitness and freedom bit that noticing patterns is one of the key tools that I have found useful. And also, of course, the breathing and the letting go, <laughs> the lightening up, all of those things, the moving the body and the developing a healthy relationship first with yourself and, and then in layers outwardly. So, um, Tracking and reflecting on what you track with regards to patterns in your own body, in your own life. There's not one way, just like with all the things I introduced. This is a tool that there are many examples and um, I use journaling as a way of tracking. That's a, that's a popular one that you might try out if you don't have something else. But if that doesn't work for you, there are other ways like uh, artwork, like colored dots on a calendar. Those are just off the top of my head. But the point is find a way of tracking your fitness, your waves, the patterns that you notice in your own life, and then develop a new pattern, if it's not already established, of spending some regular time reflecting on what you're tracking and noticing if those patterns are changing, if they're the same over time, just seeing what you can, reflecting on what you can learn because the whole thing about, the whole thing about becoming a master of your own life, of that emotional mastery that I'm talking about in my book, The Shift, 
is, as I like to say, the master has failed more times than the novice has even tried. So it's not about never failing because it's through our failures that we learn, but we learn through those failures when we track them and reflect on them. So part of that process that is a real key to to unlocking more of your own self-mastery is in the finding what works for you in the way of tracking and and then a, developing a pattern of reflecting on what you've tracked and looking with an open mind, with a curious mind, with a courageous mind, looking for those patterns that can help show you what's going on in your subconscious, what's going on underneath that first superficial layer where you might have a certain story going on in your brain. We all do. Uh, if you get under that layer into your subconscious and what some call the superconscious, which is like that genetic or that uh, group consciousness layer, then, then you can start to really glean some new information for yourself that might help you jump to a new layer, a new energetic level, a new light, new unlock a new level in your own life. And uh, to me, that's what it's all about. So I hope some of that has been helpful at all. Again, I want to mention uh, my upcoming book, The Shift, where I dive into emotional self-mastery, a whole myriad of tools that I have explored and what really works from the basics to the more complex and nuanced. Um, I try to trying to make it a nice step-by-step, -step, about an eight to 10 step guide, like across the river that is your emotions. And I think if you take that journey with me from, from the start of the book to the end of the book, that you will have a lot more understanding of your own emotions and a lot more tools in your own toolkit to utilize as you as you navigate your own river of emotions over time, your own cycles and waves. What you get, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? <laughs> it's a stick, in case you didn't get that already. I ended up saying it several times. A boomerang that doesn't come back, well, that's a stick. There you go. Yay, yay me. I remembered to tell you the punchline. Yay you, if you stuck around for that. <laughs> Thank you also, yay you, if you like and subscribe, it helps me out. Yay you, if you leave a comment and I can comment back, then yay us, high five. I do thank you for stopping by for this short Authentic Action podcast short clip. I'm going to keep working on the title. It's all a work in progress, as I like to say. I'm Angel Lily, Zigala the Art Angel, and this has been a quick little dive into Cycles and Waves, my upcoming book, The Shift. See that little guy there? little baby lizard in the dirty windowsill. <laughs> Don't forget to stay curious, stay courageous, stay fit, stay free. Like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you soon. Ciao for now.